Kishter from Nexite Group. We're a technical and management consulting company that does about 50% of our work for the federal government, which means we spend a lot of time creating 508 compliant documents. This basic tutorial will help you get started. When we talk about 508 compliance, we're talking about Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act. This requires federal agencies to make all electronic information, including documents and PDFs, accessible to a person with disabilities. It also provides technical standards and performance criteria to help guide people in creating compliant documents. For most of us, this means making our documents compatible with assistive technologies. These are screen readers or magnifiers that help people access the document. And if you're creating documents for the federal government, either as a contractor or as an agency, your documents must be 508 compliant. Here I've provided the technical standards exactly as they're written in the Rehabilitation Act. These are the guidelines to follow as um, you're creating 508 compliant documents. But rather than walking through each of these, I've created a number of distinct steps that you can follow to achieve these standards and make your documents compliant. So 508 compliance boils down to two things. One is a good document structure, which means one that is laid out logically, that moves from headings to text to exhibits in a logical fashion, um, which allows screen readers to read the document in the right order. The second element is alternative text or alt text for any information that's presented visually. So any graphs, tables, images, graphics or diagrams all have alternative text that describes what the visual is showing so that a reader can understand it without ever actually having to see it. I've created eight steps that help us break down the technical standards and um, achieve 508 compliance. So the first step is your document structure. <clears throat> now when I was first doing 508 compliance, I was typically handed a PDF in the final form and told make this compliant. But that's really going backwards. A good, good practice for 508 compliance is to start from the original source document and from the setting up the, the document structure. So first you'll want to use the styles um, tool in Microsoft Word, which allows you to structure your heading styles, heading one, two, and three, and um, normal text, which is just your, your average um, paragraph block. And you can adjust those styles and then highlight the text and click on that in order to apply the styles. So this means not manually formatting each heading, but rather selecting the text and applying a pre-outlined um, pre heading style. So for each of the default styles in there, you can also right-click the style and select Modify to change the default settings for that style. Step two is using automatic formatting features rather than manually formatting things like bullets and numbers, columns, tables, your documents, headers and footers, the table of contents, and um, footnotes and endnotes. Word has automatic features for all of these things. Um, for example, if you dub double click on the headers or footers, it opens up a, a box where you can um, format that for every page rather than manually doing it for each page. Tables can be inserted um, rather than manually drawn. There's a columns feature rather than um, using spaces or tabs to try to format your text. So um, all of these automatic features build in the um, proper code for uh, assistive technologies to accurately read them. Step three is creating alternative text for any graphics or images that you have in your document. So first, if you've created a graphic in Word with multiple elements, you'll want to select all of those elements and group them into one image. If you're simply importing an image um, from another program or from a file, it will already be one image. Um, second, you will right click the graphic or image um, and select size and alt text to open up an um, alternative text text box. Here you'll fill in the text that either describes the image or replicates text in any graphics. So let's get an idea of what your alt text should look like. For a photo, it should simply describe what's going on in the image. Um, a figure or graph that conveys information um, that is that is not uh, conveyed in the surrounding text itself needs to have a brief 
description in the alt text box um, to convey that same information. Similarly, any graph that uses a color to convey information, like a stacked bar graph, um, must present those actual figures in the alt text so that those colors do not need to be seen in order to understand what's being shown. Um, another best practice is that <clears throat> for both text boxes and images, setting the figure in line with the text where possible rather than wrapping the text around the image helps um, screen readers to read the document in the correct order. Step four is to create clear, well-labeled tables. So as we've said before, using the tables feature on the insert tab will help you in automatically insert the correct table. There's a couple things about tables um, in particular. First, the top row needs to be tagged as the header row. This means that that is the first row that the screen reader will read. And it also repeats if the table breaks across pages so that you continue to understand um, what each column or row is labeled as. Um, you also want to avoid allowing rows to break across pages so that information in one row or block stays together. So um, I provided the information on the screen on how to do each of these. Here you'll see if you right click the table and select table properties, you can see both of those um, dialog boxes to either allow the row to break across the page, which should be unchecked, and then for the first row, checking the um, designating the header row. Fifth, you want to add document properties. This is the um, title, the author, the subject, and any keywords um, into the document. You'll select the Office button, hit Prepare and Properties to enter this information. The subject can simply be a short description, um, and each keyword should be separated with a comma. Six, if you have a um, Word version of 2010 or newer, they've added a feature to check accessibility within the Word document before you've um, exported it to a PDF. You can go to File, Info, Check for Issues, and Check Accessibility. And this will provide you with a brief overview of any accessibility issues that you can um, correct in Word before you make it a PDF. Now you're at the point where you want to convert the document to a PDF. It's important that you convert using the Acrobat tab within Word, not the print or save function, as this will not um, create some of the um, accessibility code in the document that's needed. So you'll go to the, the Acrobat tab, um, select Preferences, and match um, your settings to the setting on the screen. Once you've selected the right preferences, you can hit Create PDF and then um, check your accessibility within the PDF, which Adobe has created a great tool um, to do both a quick check and a full check um, to uncover any accessibility issues that, that you can then go back into Word and correct um, before you re-PDF it. So once you have your PDF, you can go to Tools and Accessibility and perform your quick check or your full check depending on which version you have which will um, alert you to any of those issues. Sometimes those can be corrected within um, the Adobe software if needed, but it is much better practice to actually correct um, the issue within your Word document and then um, re-PDF it. If you have the option to do a full check within Adobe, um, you'll want to change your checking options to section 508 before you start checking. This way you're checking um, the document against the correct standards. The full accessibility check will find issues, um, tell you exactly where they are in the document, and even recommend some um, fixes. But as I said before, if it reveals that you forgot alt text somewhere, for example, or um, haven't indicated that the header row in a table, your best bet is to go back to the Word document, fix it there, um, and then re-PDF it. That's it. You've created a 508 compliant PDF document or Word document. Thanks for listening, and um, you can find more 508 guidance on our website at www.nextsitegroup.com.